Hi, welcome to the third part of this series. In the previous video, we separated the configuration from the code, set up our database, and created the handler to get the list of to-dos. In this video, we'll add the handlers to create a to-do list, get a to-do item from a list, and mark an item as checked. Then, I will do a quick performance test and get my impressions on the platform. Let's start with the query to get the list of items from a to-do list. In the DV module, let's create another method to get the items. It should be similar to the getToDos method, but in this case, the result will be a list of to-do items. Let's import that and we can copy the body of the getToDos method. Now, besides the database client, we also need the ID of the to-do list as a parameter. So we add the list ID as an integer 32. It may also be a good idea to return the to-do list sorted in some way. In this case, I will order by the ID of the to-do list with a descending order to get the latest first. On the query for the to-do items, we'll add a where clause to get the items with the list ID equal to the first parameter of this query and order the results by ID to get the latest first. Then let's add the reference of this list ID in the list of parameters. We make sure to replace every instance of the to-do list with to-do item that includes proper variable names and the table name. Now we can create a handler for it. Again, we can copy the gets to do method and call it get items. We also need to replace the database method call and we need the list ID as a parameter. We should have the list ID in the request. To get values from the request, we can use an Actix web feature called extractor. An extractor is a facility to access information from the request in a type safe way. Is basically a type that knows how to transform a request to the type we want. In our case, we'll have the list ID in the path of the request, so we just need to use a path extractor as a parameter. And in the generics, we define the types of the segments of the path that we need as a tuple. In this case, a single integer 32 for the list ID. Then we pass the first element of the path tuple as a parameter for get items, update the parameter names, and we are done. In the main file, we can duplicate this get route for the items. The path should be to do slash list ID slash items, specify the handler to be get items, and make sure to put the trailing slash regex at the end of the path. We save and run the server again. Now, let's try to get the items of the to-do list with a curl command. Perfect, we got item 1 and 2 of the first list. Now, back in the DV file, let's create a to-do list. We need the client and the title of the new to-do list. And as a result, we want to get the recently created to-do list. Now, we need another prepare statement, this time for an insert into to-do list, we just need the title, and we can get it from the parameter of the query. We can make this same query return the created row by using returning ID and title. Next, similar to other methods with the client, call query passing the prepare statement and parameters, then call await and expect to provide a custom error message, get the iterator, Use map to transform the row to a to-do item and collect the to-do items into a vector. Now, since in this insert we created a single item, we can use pop to get it. Pop will return an optional value. We can transform that into OK if the value exists or a new error otherwise with the message error creating to-do list. And we can just return this just like that since it complies with our result type. Next, we need to create the handler for this. But in this case, instead of getting the value from the path, we want to get it from the body of the request as a JSON. 
Fortunately, there is an extractor for that, and in the generic, we just need a DTO type. Let's call it create to do list. Now, let's go to the models file to define it. It will be a public struct with just the title and the code to deserialize it. Back in the handler, we import it and now we can use it. The code will be pretty similar to other handlers. Get the client, call the DV method to get the result. The DV method is create to do and as the parameter, we can get the title from the JSON and use clone to get a copy of the string. And the matcher should be similar, which is return the created to do as a JSON. Let's rename the method and we are done with this handler. Back in the main file, we will duplicate the to-do's route, but it will use our new handler for post requests. Let's save, run the server again and test this endpoint with curl. This time, we specify that it is a post request. We also need the content type header since the body is a JSON, hyphen D to specify the body and a simple JSON with the title list tree. Cool. We got the created list with ID tree as result. If we call the to do's endpoint again, we can see the new list here as the first element. Now for the specific items, we want to be able to check them, mark them done. So back in the main file, let's create another route. And in the path after items, we'll have the item ID. This will be a put request and we'll call the handler check item. So let's create that handler. In this case, we need two values from the path topo, the ID of the list and the ID of the item we want to check. Again, similar code to previous ones, call the DB method check to do and as parameters, the list ID and the item ID and the same matcher code. Now let's create the DB method check to do with the list ID and item ID. And for now, let's just return nothing if everything is okay and handle the specific errors later. We'll need another prepare statement, this time to update the to-do item. Set checked to true, where list ID is equal to the first parameter and ID to the second parameter. And one last conditional, so we only update when the item is not checked yet. I wait for it and unwrap. This time, we'll use execute instead of query, pass the reference to the prepare statement and the reference to the parameters, list ID and item ID. Await, expect to specify a custom error, error checking to do item. In this case, the result should tell us the number of rows that were updated. So in this matcher, we can do something like this. In the first case, we can have a reference to the number of update values and check if that number is equal to 1. That means the item was checked and we can return OK. Any other case, we'll just return a new error of kind other with the message fail to check the ID. Now back in the handler. Oh, before we continue, let's be consistent and rename the DV method check to do to check item. OK, now for the matcher, if everything is OK, and it was updated, I want to have some kind of a JSON result that tells me that. So let's do that. I will create a result model. It will be a public struct with a success value as a boolean. And I need to be able to serialize it. Good. Let's rename it to something more specific. And the idea is to return this with a value true when we successfully modify the to-do item. So if we get an error of kind other, that just means that the item was not modified. It was already checked. Let's import the other kind in them and we are done. Now save and run the server again. Let's get the items of the second list with a curl. We got item 1 with id 3. To check that item, we need a put request and have the id of the item in the path. Good. The first time it was successful, but not the second time because it was already checked and we can see that the checked attribute is now true. Next, we'll do a performance test. Please be cautious about this. This test is just to give you an idea of the performance. 
there are way too many factors that can affect tests. So don't just rely on my results to make any decision. I encourage you to try it yourself. Having said that, for this, I want to test three things. A plain serialization without any external resource usage, an endpoint with a database read, and another with a database write. I will do the test first on my machine, the specs are in the description, then I will do it with Docker, limiting the resources to have an idea of the performance in a chip tier virtual machine in the cloud. To get more consistent results in our test, let's put a limit to the number of rows we get for the to-do list query. Now let's build our project. Cargo has two main profiles for building. The dev profile we've been using so far, with good defaults for development without any optimization, and the release profile that will create an optimized build for our release. We want the optimized version for our test. Be aware that the optimized version will take more time. We can now run the server. For this test, I will use the AV benchmarking tool since I already have that in my system. This is a tool to test an installation of an Apache server, but will help us to get an idea of the performance of our application. The command is really simple. We use AB, then hyphen N to specify the number of requests. We set it to 100,000 hyphen K to use the HTTP keep alive feature hyphen C to specify the number of concurrent requests, hyphen Q to suppress some of the messages displayed by the test and the URL to call. In this case, it's just a get request to the root endpoint to test the serialization. Whoa, the test finished in less than a second with more than 100,000 requests per second and less than a millisecond of response time. That's fast. The percentiles are looking really good too. Now let's try the database read with the to-do's endpoint. We got close to 20,000 requests per second. That's not bad at all. The meantime per request is close to 2 milliseconds. Then for the database write, let's create a JSON file to use it in the post request. It just need to contain the title, then save. And in the command, we add hyphen p to specify the file containing the data for the post body, in our case the to do json, hyphen uppercase t for the content type of the request, that will be application json, and we are done. Let's run the test. It is taking more time than before, but can do 8000 requests per second with a mean of 3 milliseconds per request. Good. Now, Let's try to put the app into a container and limit the resources. The idea is to simulate a small VM in a cloud provider. So let's create a docker file. Again, this is just for the test. Make sure to investigate a bit more before using this in production. The base image will be Damien, the bull-eye slim version. And we just need to add our compiled release version of the app, specify the working directory, and the command will be the path to our binary. That's all for the docker file. Now in the docker compose file, we already have our database as a container. So we can limit the resources like this. For the memory, 512 megabytes of RAM and one CPU. Then I will create a new service for the to-do actics. It will build the docker file in the current directory and we can easily specify the configuration here in the environment variables. So let's copy the .n file content and replace the equal sign with a colon. Now for the server host, instead of the loopback address, we need our server to be accessible from any IP address inside the container. So we set it to zeros to achieve that. We also need to change the Postgres host to point to the Postgres container. To do that, we just need to add a link to that service, like this. The name of the service goes here, and now we can use the service name as the host for the database. Then we can copy the resource limits from the database in our app service. And finally, we specify the port mapping. Now we can give it a try. Let's stop the server 
and use Docker Compose app. With my current version of Docker Compose, I cannot limit the resources without running the containers in a Docker Swarm. So I'll have to use the compatibility mode, since this was still possible in the version 2. So let's run it. It looks like I made a mistake in the Docker Compose. I forgot to write limits, so I will add that. Try again, and it's building the container. Now, we should have both the database and the app in a container. Let's try it with a curl command. It works. Cool. We can see the list of the tools created by our previous test. Perfect. Now, let's run the test for the serialization. 11,000 requests per second. That is 10 times slower than my initial result. Now, let's test the database read. It gives me 2,000 requests per second. Finally, the write test. It's a bit less, but still close to 2,000. Let's increase the CPUs and try the test again. This time, I want to see the memory usage using htop. Let's filter the threads so we can only see things related to Actix. Right now, my container uses about 4.2 megabytes of RAM. Let's put that side by side. We can already see other processes competing for resources in my computer. So again, take these results with a grain of salt. It's really difficult to get a benchmark right. So let's try the write test again. The memory is increasing to 5 megabytes, 10 megabytes of shared memory. And that's, that's almost nothing. Although I didn't manage to get the crazy results of the benchmarks I initially saw, these are still impressive numbers. With Rust, it feels like you are writing optimized code without even trying. And having something like Cargo made this process really enjoyable. I must say, Actix seems really simple to use and straightforward. Everything I tried so far made sense, and still, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This app is far from being complete, but I look forward to keep learning and use this more. I will definitely miss this when I get back to work on my Java project. And that will be all for this series. Try these benchmarks on your favorite framework. Let me know the results in the comments. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell button. It will encourage me to create more content like this. Thanks for watching.